So recently, MTG headquarters has been getting a lot of flack for some of the things he says. This has happened for a few months now, and most of the community member is pretty against him. And there is a long history that I detailed in past videos, but I wanted to at least defend him or give him a kind of a why I don't feel like he's bad for the game. And that there are far worse things happening right now where it makes it seem like banning him for life and putting him as the worst enemy of magic, which he is because he's banned for life. We have convicted rapists who will be coming back to our game. Or not convicted, I guess they settled. In 2048, we have judges who abuse their power, store owners, and of course, Alex Bercini. One of the reasons that he is so disliked in the community is I think he's honest. Um, people don't deal with honesty very well. Uh, people live in this imaginary bubble. And if something that goes against what they believe, they will write against that. They would say, oh, that can't be right. I live in my own reality, and this is different from my personal reality. Therefore, it has to be wrong, and therefore, I need this guy's crazy. So there's all types of psychological studies about how millennials and younger generations have grown up in a bubble and what they how they interact with people is significantly different from older generations due to social media and having grown up with social media and living in a environment where likes and comments and all of this stuff matter so much. So I grew up, I probably last generation, I grew up with Magic the Gathering card game. I remember playing my first video game, Mech Warriors 1 or 2, came with our IBM that was like $4,000 at the time. And I was just so like, oh, wow, cool. But I wasn't addicted to it. And when social media happened, it wasn't a big deal. Like it happened to me when I was in college, but I didn't have social media. We didn't have social media in middle school, elementary school, and most of high school. I didn't use it at all in high school. So when you talk about uh, the a younger generation and these people who are railing against Jeremy, I think it's because they their their expectations on life are not real. And I'll share my story now, and, and it's it goes on to why. So when someone goes to college and they graduate with an English degree, no, I'm not trying to make fun of English degrees or this is just reality. English degrees are a, an NYU, we had something called underwater basket weaving and that actually was a degree that you could pay $245,000 at the school called Gallatin, which was part of NYU, where you got to choose your own major. Yeah, somebody majored in that. Somebody, somebody's majoring in meme. Memes. I'm. You think I'm kidding, but this is my almada. At least my college. Uh, a lot of times I don't mention NYU <laughs> if I can. I, I love them to death, and I had a great time. But my gosh, some of the stuff that comes out of that school in the news is kind of out there. Yeah, I mean, people graduate and then they realize, hey, I need to find a job, and then they, they move back home. I don't have any, most of our entry level employees, they work, at, they live at home with their parents. That's just how it is. But they need a plan. You need a plan. How am I going to move out? How am I going to start a life? I interviewed a 29 year old photographer. The best job she ever got in eight years of photography was shooting for Academy Sports for $14 an hour part time seasonal. She went to the Art Institute of Houston and has about $150,000 in student loans. How are you going to pay that off when you get probably a year make maybe two to $3,000 and you live at home? The answer is you cannot. This whole concept of a Magic Pro and Alex Bercini and you know selling Magic cards and making tons of money, being MTG Finance, it's not correct. And that is the bubble that is being burst here. 
So many of these people online, they want you to believe that they're super smart, super intelligent, well-educated. And you know, let, let's, take, let's take some personalities. And again, I don't, I'm not going to attack them. I'm just saying reality versus what they believe. Most of them don't have stable jobs. Or their quote, stable job is Magic the Gathering YouTubing or content creation. That is a terrible job. It might pay you a hundred thousand right now, but it may not be around in the next fifteen years. Plus, there's no, there's no guarantee that this particular skill that you're learning, at this particular age that you are at, is going to do well. So when I do marketing and advertisement, there's growth. Marketing and advertisement, you can only get better because you learn and you learn. And my interns, we have interns now, and they learn. They're not particularly useful mind you and they eat a lot like my gosh like they eat tons i i forget what it's like to be like 20 and just eat like uh just be able to eat that much and not gain weight but anyway that's besides the point what skills does a magic content creator have you might say video editing but i don't think that's true because it takes them forever to video edit uh what do you think uh marketing I don't know, they're not running ads, and I don't think a marketing company would be like, okay, yeah, I'll hire you, Weds, because obviously you know how to market yourself. Uh, a lot of these things in real life um, do not apply, and that's what MTG headquarters is. He's a rude awakening, and he has a job, he owns a company. And the, uh, he owns a marketing company as well. I'm sure that we do very similar things. I don't know if he has workers, but I have workers. And my primary objective is always to keep the workers happy and to make sure that they can advance. And it, it only benefits me if somebody I work with is getting better at the skill. I don't want to push them down because that would push my company down. And occasionally they leave for a better job, but that is a startup. So back to the Alex part. And then this part really grinds me so much because this guy is not wealthy. He is, to my knowledge, he doesn't have a regular full-time job. And yet he's admired by everyone in this community and Wizards of the Coast. Because he will sacrifice his life and his future to play Magic, to win. He would sacrifice his life, his future, his reputation. People hate him. Some people hate him. And he will do that in the name of magic. And what more can Wizard of the Coast ask of you? He's given his uh, name. He's given his reputation. He's given, he's become the villain. He's given his, his, I mean, where can this guy work? Like, let's take an example. Let's say that you're an eight-year magic pro and you go for a job. Where who's going to hire you? A big data company? You don't have the degrees. Who's going to hire you? A university? You don't have the degrees. Who's going to hire you? Me? No, you don't have the experience, and I don't want to train you because you probably are very, very difficult to deal with as an eight-year pro, of course. So at the end of the day, like, what did you really get after 10 years of being a pro Magic player? What did you really get about 10 years writing articles for MTG Finance behind a paywall except you know below minimal pay, like not even a $40,000 salary? The reality is this is a game. People take this way too seriously. This is not your life. And when people make it their life, either as a content creator, a full-time content creator for Magic, or as a Magic Pro, or a Magic personality that Wizard Coach pays, pennies of right like if we were talking about league of legends or dota or something like that where the personalities get paid regular salaries uh league of legends players get paid a salary from riot it's not very much but at least riot the owner of league of legends is paying them it would be different or if there was a uh, investor like here like um you know, millions of dollars are being invested in League of Legends, Dota, Overwatch teams. Millions of dollars are not being invested in Magic teams. You have to ask, why is that? Why would an investor or a bank or anyone that you would give you a loan not want to invest in a pro Magic team? 
there's a reason for it. It financially makes no sense. People who criticize other people who dedicate their lives to magic for not being realistic, they are ostracized, they are poked at, they are, you know, um, said that they are negative. I get that a lot. I'm so negative. But in reality, this is a card game for children. It's a card game when the parent company is trying to make as much money as possible and does not give pro player salaries. Does not, I mean, you think that's a strange concept? Follow League of Legends, and especially in North America when they did a franchise model, and see how much money people have put in. Uh, Cleveland Cavalier, Cavaliers, the, which had a very good game. I'm very sad LeBron lost. Uh, this is game one when I'm making this video. Golden State Warriors, Houston Rockets, like Rick Fox, who used to be a professional basketball player. These are not um, Optic, which is one of the largest uh, and most wealthy uh, sporting brands in esports. These are not nobodies. These are people with a lot of money, and they are going to put money into it. So it makes sense for full-time content creators. It makes sense for media personalities. It makes sense for all of this stuff to exist in the field where hundreds of million dollars are being poured in. Poured in. It does not make sense for that field to exist in magic. So I think that's what MTG headquarters is. He is a adult with a job. And I think he has a wife, but I'm not positive. Um, I'm pretty sure he has a wife. And he has a life outside magic. And that to these people who have dedicated their whole lives, who have staken their reputation, who have... Um, it breaks their bubble. Reality. Anyway, bye.